The jury doesn't yet have the case, but the prosecution is in the middle of closing arguments right now. I have a soundbite of how that's going, which I'll play in one second. But first, Eric, I heard you on my friend Nancy Grace on her podcast, which I listen to every night. I love you guys all on the Nancy Grace podcast. Thank you. Um, and you were saying, given the fact that you you represent the family of um, the, the housekeeper who died on the property and who Alec said to her sons, don't worry, I'm going to sue myself, basically, on your behalf. I'm going to give you the money. Turned out he got $4.3 million. He didn't give those boys one cent. Did not. And you stepped in to help those kids. Okay, so that's your kind of role. And given that role, you have a lot of connections in this whole case. And yesterday, there was mystery about a possible note. A note did go to the judge. Both counsel for the defense and the prosecution talked to the judge about it. We don't know, but there was reporting that there, somebody overheard them say it was about a juror. We can't really afford to lose many more jurors. No. We only have two uh, alternates. No. We so we, we got to protect the, the remaining jurors. And you had heard a rumor about what it might be about. If you could tell us what that was and whether you think that wound up being true, because right now, as far as I understand, the current jury remains seated as it was 24 hours ago. Yeah, the you know I get, I have a podcast, Cup of Justice, that's a highly rated podcast, and we get a lot of good tips. And I'm I've gotten very close to Creighton Waters during this trial. In fact, I trade tweets with text That's with him, uh, beginning at five o'clock in the morning to seven o'clock almost every morning, where we, you know, strategize. And he'll ask me a question, "What do you think?" And he's so receptive, just like Dave, I'm sure, is during a trial to to take anything that somebody's going to give and. And maybe it makes sense. And one of my listeners said that there was a rumor that one of the jurors possibly had made some statements during the trial, which would indicate where that juror was leaning. Now, I don't know any truth to that. Um, I'm told that uh, that person may have sent an email directly to the judge. uh, And that's all I know. There's nothing that's been Mm. released. And this morning, we also had... um, a delay in getting the closing argument started when there was a at the bench meeting that lasted about 12 minutes. And I had heard that maybe something happened at Mattel. So we have a, you know, a number of different things going on. And this judge wants to, you're hearing a plane in the black background. He wants to land this plane. He wants to deliver the evidence in this case to the jury because it's gone on far too long. So, Dave, do you think we should assume that that did not pan out? Because, you know, as Eric was saying on Nancy's show yesterday, the rumor was that this juror had said, I think he's innocent. And if a juror says that in the course of a trial, or I think he's guilty in the course in the course of the trial, they're gone. It's over for that jury. You're, you're bounced. And so in this case, it would be the prosecution who would say she's gone or he's gone. The fact that that didn't happen, I would I would assume suggests they didn't they weren't able to confirm any of that. Correct. So that's good because you don't want jurors to make up their minds before all the evidence is in and to communicate that to other jurors. That's where really where it's a no-no. You can have your own thoughts, but you can't communicate that to others. And so uh, I think that's probably a false rumor. I'm glad that Eric reported it because you want this trial to be as fair as possible. I was yeah. concerned by the reports that two jurors were crying when Alec Murdoch took the stand in his direct examination. That, to me, mm. was a problem. Prosecutors never want to see that. But that was a Thursday Alec Murdoch. Friday Alec Murdoch, when he was under a withering cross-examination, was very different. He wasn't as sympathetic. He was combative. You saw him for the liar that he is. And hopefully those jurors who were crying on Thursday had a different opinion of him on Friday. Yeah, you saw. I got to tell saw. you, I'm scared, guys. I, I think he did it. I've said this openly. I, my analysis as a lawyer who's been watching this case is he did it. But I'm scared the jury might not get it. I just think, you know, he was kind of charming up there, Eric. And I realized that the cross brought out some very valid points about what a bad guy this is. He was kind of charming. And he talked to the jury in their language in this real colloquial way, like I'm bonding. The brother, you know, John Marvin, he was really likable too. He's kind of vouching for Alec. I'm worried this jury's not going to be able to get past that Murdoch name well, and how nice this man seemed. Well, from, And just sort of chalk it up to, well, financial crimes, that doesn't mean he killed them. Well, from John Marvin's standpoint, you know, Dave and I would have asked the same exact four questions. Do you love your family? Do you love your brother? 
Um, it would hurt the family name if your brother was convicted of double murder. And oh, by the way, he didn't tell you for two years that he was at the kennel and I would have sat down and that would have neutralized John Marvin. As far as, far as Alex goes, you know, this is a referendum on Alex. This trial started out as a scientific trial. We thought it was going to be about blood, DNA, and GSR. Then it moved to a techno technological trial of phones, of phone mapping, of videos, and then OnStar. And now, after last Thursday and Friday, it's a referendum on Alex. Are you going to believe him? Look, he said that everybody in this trial has lied. Blanca lied about the Vineyard Vine shirt. Shelly Smith lied about the blue tarp and about the 30 to 40 minute conversation that they supposedly had. Mark Tinsley lied about the meeting they had at the Trial Lawyers Association about the Mallory Beach case. Sled has lied. Marion, the sister-in-law, has lied. T.C. Smith, the, the, the African-American sheriff yesterday, who said he never asked me permission to carry a badge or a blue light. And of course, the media has lied. And Alex has told you, I'm a drug addict, I'm a thief, and I'm a liar. And it's only when the devil was at the door, Megan, did he say, hey, I admit I was at the kennel, even though I never told my son, my only living son for two years, I lied to him about the last conversation and meetings and, and dealings with your mother and, and your brother. But because I've told you that today, you need to believe me and not anybody else. And I just think I believe he's guilty. I believe that there's at least 10 jurors that believe he's guilty. And if people are going to listen to the judge's instructions and they're going to have to deliberate, it's my hope that um, people will keep an open mind and let the evidence uh, show you that he did it. Look, if, if you brought Cyril Wecht, Henry Lee, or the best pathologist that Dave has ever used, the conclusion would be the same. All the, all the evidence points to Alex. And nobody else. What, um, 10 jurors, why, instead of 12? Well, I think that there's always two jurors that um, may be swayed by a closing argument and they walk into the jury room. I've heard a lot of people say, well, I think he's guilty, but I don't think the state proved it. So let's say two people walk in there with that uh, concept of I do believe he did it, but I don't think the state met its burden. Then it's up to the other 10 jurors who had their own set of two eyes and two ears to educate those people, and hopefully they have an open mind. The problem that we have in these kind of cases is if people have a closed mind and they refuse to deliberate and they refuse to listen to reasonable arguments, remember, it's reasonable doubt, and Dave will talk about that. It's not any doubt. It's got to be a justifiable, reasonable doubt. You know, we all have doubts in life, but then they may be irrational and not reasonable. Look, you did the tough thing during COVID. You paid your people and pulled your business through the pandemic. And now doing the tough thing could qualify you for up to 26,000 bucks per employee at covidtaxrelief.org. Government funds are available to reward companies with two or more employees who stayed open during COVID. This is not a loan and you don't have to pay it back. The program is complicated, but nobody knows more about it than the CPAs and tax experts at covidtaxrelief.org. You pay nothing up front. They do all the work, and then they share a percentage of the cash they get for you. Businesses of all types, including nonprofits and churches, can qualify, even those who took PPP loans and even those who had increases in sales. You did the tough thing for your employees during COVID. Let covidtaxrelief.org do the tough thing for you and get you up to $26,000 per employee would be tough for you to do. It's actually not that tough for covidtaxrelief.org. They know exactly what they're doing. And if you qualify, they're going to get this for you. covidtaxrelief.org, covidtaxrelief.org. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.